Memory is a very crucial resource and understanding how the memory is managed by the operating system while we are running an application would help us in becoming a better programmer. So in this video, let's study about dynamic mem memory and what are the different segments of memory while an application is running and what are stacks and heaps in these segments. So memory assigned to a program or application is basically divided into four segments code segment, static segment, stack, and heap. So the code segment basically uh, stores the instructions that need to be executed. Static and global segment maintains the static or global variables whose lifetime is during uh, the entire lifetime of application. Then we have a stack which uh, keeps track of the function calls and local variables and whose scope is not uh, same as the application scope like the global variables and then we have dynamic memory so this is the memory uh, when we need a large chunk of memory and the size is not known at the compile time so such memory is managed in a heap now let's see what are these segments so when we run any application then uh, these are the four segments so the code segment, then static or global segment, then stack memory, and finally heap. So these are the four segments. So uh, so these are uh, quite obvious static and code segments. So for example, if we have uh, this code here, C++ code, then uh, when this application starts running, main, in, main is the first method that is invoked. So if this is our stack, let's say this is the stack part of this. So we have expanded out this stack section. And then uh, we have the static or global section. So this is a global variable, G1, and it will remain in the memory throughout this lifetime of this program. So this G1 will come here because it's a global. So this is the static or global section. And this is stack. Now when main starts running, so this stack is allocated during the, uh, by the operating system when application starts running and its size will not change. So this stack has some memory, maybe let's say 5 MB. Then when main starts running, then main will be pushed to the stack. So main is pushed here because main has started executing. Then main has variable C1. So C1 is there. And then it calls F002 and passes on C1. So now main is executing, but before that, foo2 needs to return. So foo2 is pushed in the stack. Now foo2 has uh, this b1, b1, b2, and one static variable b3. So this will remain there. So b3 will come in the static section. And these b1 and b2 will come in this b1 and b2 because this is the stack frame assigned to this function f002 and any function that is on the top of the stack is currently executing so main had started executing but main then called f002 so main has not returned yet first foo2 will return then main will resume its execution so and these are in this scope of this uh, stack frame And this foo2 calls foo1. So before foo2 returns, foo1 needs to return, execute. So this is called. And its variables are a1, a2, and a3. So a1, a2, and a3 are here. And uh, there is some more space in the stack. So if by any means this stack is full and still we are uh, making some calls, then we will run into stack overflow issue 
because we cannot expand the size of stack during runtime. So one example could be that we are making some uh, bad recursion. So there is some recursive call which is a kind of leading to very bad recursion and we have consumed all the stack memory then we can run into this. So now let's uh, set this apart. Now let's see what will happen. So when this foo function completes, it will return and this stack frame will be freed. So now this uh, foo1 has completed its ex execution. Now foo2 has the value returned by foo1. So after some time, foo2 will also complete execution and will be popped out of the stack. Now main function is executing and finally this main function will complete ex execution and uh, this stack frame will be empty and this uh, then uh, when the program terminates these uh, global and static section this would also be freed. So this is the typical uh, way the memory is handled. So here we have not talked about this last component, this heap memory. We have talked about these. Now let's see when heap comes into picture. Now let's see what is dynamic memory and how we can request dynamic memory at runtime from the OS. So in C, we have functions malloc, calloc, realloc and free for dealing with dynamic memory at runtime. And uh, when we call any function like malloc, then we assign, we pass how many bytes we want memory at runtime. So we don't know how much memory is required during the compile time. So we need to uh, call these functions to request memory at runtime from the OS. And these memories are, these memory address addresses are stored in heap. So heap is a very large memory. So we call it also free memory, free pool of memory or dynamic memory. And it's much more large compared to these stacks and uh, these memory segments. And uh, then we have in C++, we have new operator and delete operator for uh, requesting memory in the heap. So we can also use uh, these in C++ because we can call C functions in C++ also. Now let's see some example so that it's clear. So let's say currently this function f1 is executing. Let's say this was our stack and it had some parent function calls here and f1 is in the top of the stack. That is f1 is currently executing and within f1 we have a pointer p and we request a memory for int at runtime or if we are in uh, using C APIs then we can request malloc four bytes or we can also write size of int. So what this malloc does is, so this is our heap section, this is stack and this is heap. This OS will see that we, I have requested four bytes, so it will allocate four bytes and give the starting address of this as a pointer and it's stored in P. So this P is local to this F1, so it, there will be one variable p in this stack frame of f1 and it will point here and this is 4 bytes we could also request p2 and this time let's say we request 
we want uh, to allocate the memory to an array of size 100 integers. So we will say 100 times size of int. So it will allocate 400 bytes, let's say from here to here and P2, the starting address of this will be returned and P2 is a local variable to F1, so P2 will point to here. Now if uh, we reassign P this variable or let's call it P1, now we reassign P1 equal to and we request another memory, let's say malloc 8. So now a new memory is allocated to us in the heap, let's say this part and now this P1 is pointing here but we see that this memory is now unused and this pointer is not there, P1 is now pointing here but this is still in the heap and the application uh, will not get this memory at any point of time because it always thinks that the requester of this memory is still using it but we do not have track of this memory we have lost track of that so there will be memory leak and if we use uh, multiple such allocations and we are not freeing the memory then the application memory will keep on increasing with time so here we also need to call free when we have done using the memory so once we allocated 4 bytes to it and we have used that memory, we no longer need it, then we need to call free function on that same pointer p1. So this memory will be returned back to the OS. So it can reassign this memory when a new request comes. Similarly here, when we are done with it, we will call free p2 for freeing out this memory. So whenever we request any dynamic memory at runtime, we also need to call free explicitly at runtime. We can write a similar code in C++. So instead of malloc and calloc, we will use the new and delete operators. So this is how we request memory for one integer. And so now P is here and it allocate some space for one integer, storing one integer, so it can be 4 bytes and now P1 is pointing to the starting address of this and when we are want to uh, request more memory, like we want to uh, request memory for one array then uh, we can request it like new int and 100, so it will allocate memory for storing 100 integers and P1 will point to the beginning of that address and uh, for freeing the memory we will call delete P and delete this braces, square braces for P1 because here we had this P1 is one array of 100 integers. So this is the difference between deleting a single integer pointer and an array of integers. So one thing to remember is that we need to explicitly call the free or delete method to free the memory. And when we are using new, then we need to use delete. We cannot use new and then call free on this. Free is reserved when we use malloc or calloc or realloc and when we are using new operator then we need to call delete. 